in this third chapter, we will talk about digital services. So we will improve your understanding of digital service, what they are and what, how can they be further improved. Uh, so this chapter is about how changes and innovations in the provisions of public services could be implemented to make sure that in the end we have better public services to our citizens, businesses, but also to other users of uh, government services. Let us first talk about what do we mean with key digital public services, a term we introduced in the previous chapter uh, to talk about what to, where we highlighted the current situation with regard to digital government throughout uh, Europe. Key public services, they can be considered as services that are related to important events in the life of businesses and citizens. They in fact uh, consist of common digital services that the average citizens or business is likely to require once or even multiple times throughout his life. In the EU, in Europe, we've identified eight key life events, six life events uh, for citizens, uh, it's about family life, it's about moving to another place, a place it's about owing and driving a car, losing and finding a job, studying, and also starting a small uh, claim procedure. Those are the, C, uh, key, the, the six key life uh, events we've identified for citizens. And then we have two more focused more on businesses, which constitute uh, starting a business on one hand, but also running and operating a business on the other hand. Now we have these uh, six or 6.2 uh, key life events, which are related to um, digital services. Um, uh, I think it's important the key message is that for each of these live event uh, contains of several services. Now let us go back to the example of Anna, uh, who also was looking at a certain stage for another house. So she was thinking on buying a new house, which means that she had to go through different steps, or she, she, which means that she had to rely on different types of services. So when deciding to move to another place, she assessed uh, what on online information was available, for instance, on local schools, on local amenities in the areas where she would wanted to uh, go living. She also had to obtain some permits that allowed her, for instance, to uh, do some construction works to make sure that she has, that she received permission to uh, live there. But also she had to uh, register a new address into the municipality register of our new, new municipality. Uh, and then she had to provide some information to other organizations about this new address, for instance, to the post and to the utilities. And then finally, she also had to make sure that she was send, signed out of the municipality register of our old municipalities. So here you see quite a few key services that the, cit that the citizens like Anna, who wants to buy a new house, who wants to move to another place, uh, has to go through it. Now, when we talk about digital government, it's about digital services that support us as a citizen uh, throughout these steps to make sure that these steps go much more uh, easier uh, and can be completed uh, in a much shorter notice. So it's about providing information, receiving information and completing transactions. That's in fact uh, what we are talking about when talking about digital government. Uh, before in the previous chapter, we already introduced the 2030 digital compass that had the ambition of the 100% uh, online service delivery of a set of key uh, services. Now important to realize when talking about the digital compass is that it also looks at services in some other key areas, domains. Uh, for instance, telemedicine, where also there we see uh, digital government, uh, digital data technologies could also help here into improving services to citizens. There's justice, where also a digital transformation uh, could provide a lot of added value. And there's a lot on about communities, so platforms in rural, rural and urban communities, which could also be transformed, uh, empowered by the use of digital technologies. We just mentioned these three domains to show you it's not only about improving, transforming uh, key services. No, we can in fact improve these services in many different other uh, fields, many different other domains. Overall, independent on which sector we are talking about, it's all about citizens and businesses that first, that on one hand need to receive information. They need sometimes need to provide information, but they also need to complete transactions with public administrations. And we see these, these three types of services are the key service or are the main services what we are talking about when talking about digital government. Important to know is that these services, whether it's about uh, contact services, information services or transaction services, these services need to, uh, need to uh, meet some key requirements, meet some need, uh, key needs. 
they, for instance, need to be accessible and inclusive, which means that they need to that they need to be accessible regard, regardless of this capacity, uh, uh, languages, technical issues. That they should be inclusive for all target groups, for all types of users. It should be possible to make uh, to make use of these online services. Services should also be very easy to use and very user friendly. Also, again, here, non-expert users should be able to find and understand the information provided. They should be able to complete transactions, etc. But at the same time, the services and the information made available uh, should be trusted by the, by the citizens and businesses. It should be secure. Citizens should be able to trust information, and they should be, they, they, which means they should have to, they have to be secure. These two uh, requirements show that there need, there's a need for a balance between, on one hand, security, and on the other hand, user, user friendliness. Uh, which makes it, which already shows, in fact, the, the difficulty or the complexity of making sure that we have the digital uh, services meeting the demands, meeting the requirements uh, we have in mind. And a final key principle to which we also want our services uh, to fulfill or to be in line with is a service of making sure that uh, citizens only have to provide certain information, only one. So this is in fact the first level of requirements, the first level of needs we have for with regard to our online digital services. Now, beyond this, it's more about just making our services available online. There are also some additional components, additional requirements we want our services to uh, be compliant with. One thing we already mentioned a few times, cross-border services. So it's not only about national services, only available, only accessible to citizens within one particular country. No, we also have the ambition, our services should be available, accessible uh, for all EU uh, citizens. So we need cross-border services. Uh, ideally, we don't have one general service or a set of general services that are uh, available for our services. No, ideally, we also try to adapt personalize our services to particular user groups to make sure that we that the services we provide to this kind of users are fully adapted to uh, his needs, uh, to his requirements in the way of which services he needs, but also the way to, to which channels he wants to um, take advantage of these services. So we have the move from general to more personalized services. A third evolution is not, by not focusing on providing each of these services uh, separately, not only from not only single public services, but really think on how can we make sure that we uh, combine, that we integrate many different services in the sense that uh, one, one particular user, one, one particular citizen can take advantage from a series of rated services at the same time in an end to end, -to -end uh, way. This also brings additional challenges to the public authorities uh, involved in providing these services because it means that they have to work together. They have to integrate their services, their working procedure, their processes, et cetera. And then finally, another level of ambition, it's about realizing these proactive services in the sense that it's no longer a required to citizens, businesses request or apply, apply for services. No, in case they need it and they, uh, and they, uh, and they, um, they can receive it, they automatically receive it. So this fourth evolution from reactive to proactive services shows the additional levels of uh, ambitions we have with regard to our uh, service delivery uh, of online services to our citizens, businesses, and other users. And finally, here we want to make sure it's not only about the actual provision of these services, or do we want to make sure that in providing these services, it's also important to take into consideration to look at the underlying processes internal processes within government, but more and more the external processes, the collaboration with new actors, with citizens, with businesses, new ways of interacting with them, etc. Internal process innovation looks at how government itself works, which organizational forms they have, which management methods they have, and how they work with, together within government. So there's a side of internal process innovation, which is relevant, but which we could, should be combined with external process innovation innovations in the way that governments are working together, co-creating, uh, co-operating co with ag other actors um, outside the public sector, citizens, businesses, researchers, and many other sectors that could support governments in developing, delivering their services and their policies. What did we learn from this chapter? First, digital government is about new and improved digital services to make sure that we, can, that we can meet demands of citizen businesses. Second, 
we should think we should make sure that we also look at the underlying process under beneath beneath these services which means that we also need to think on how governments internally but also externally can improve its way of working and can better cooperate with stakeholders uh, outside the public sector <laughs>